friends. Welcome to Knit 2, Cultivate 2. This is primarily a knitting podcast, but I get up to all kinds of shenanigans while homeschooling my kids. My name's Emily Wood, and I live in Midland, Michigan with my husband, Colin, and our two kiddos. Welcome. If this is your first time, welcome, and I hope you find something you like. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back and seeing what I'm up to. It has been a little bit. I recorded an episode, an entire episode, and forgot, and I never edited it. And then two weeks passed, and I forgot I had all this footage. Oh, ADHD, object permanence, all of that is kind of garbage, but it's okay. Uh, so I actually have a good bit to talk about. Some things I'm going to talk about I don't actually have to show you, but they're not very exciting. They're things like ankle socks in Knit Picks Felici. But I have really exciting stuff to show you, so let's go ahead and get started with some admin. The first thing I want to mention is that there is a knit along going on. I will link below the video where you can comment your projects, and there are quite a bit of projects in there. I am gonna show you today one of the prizes, which is one of my finished objects, and then the other prize for this quarter, first quarterly giveaway is going to be yarn or fiber that I dye for you using colors you choose from my stash or my dye stock. So either I have Knit Picks Bear Gloss, which is a silk merino blend. Fabulous, it's so wonderful to spin. And Knit Picks Bear Capretta, which is cashmere nylon merino, right? Merino cashmere nylon, yes. So then I will give you my dye stock and you can tell me which colors you want and I'll dye you up a surprise. Um, yeah, I'm excited, but go enter because there are already quite a few entries. Other than that, let's go ahead and get started and get to the knitting. Okay, so my first finished object that I'm gonna show you was spinning. I showed you guys my new fancy wheel when I got it last summer and I kind of barely touched it. Um, to be fair, I wasn't really spinning a lot to begin with, even on my electric wheel. But I pulled out some baby alpaca that has been one of the things I'm hoarding in stash. And I'm trying not to do that to enjoy the things I have. And this in particular, because I didn't buy it. It was, it came with a wheel that I purchased. So I, I just, there was no sentimental value. I just needed to use it because I wanted to. And I got about 150 yards. This is the Pinot Noir colorway. Let's see how close I can get it. There's these gorgeous deep grays and purples, clearly my color scheme. <laughs> anyway, this has not been washed yet. Um, so it will change, it's not completely finished, but I need to take it downstairs and I actually have like two other skeins I need to soak. Um, that have just been sitting there waiting for me to do it downstairs. But this is one of the prizes for the quarterly giveaway. And then I will dye you up some surprise as well. Anyway, this was, I, I don't know if I said this yet or not, but it was 100% baby alpaca and it was great to spin. It's really soft. I Alpaca is tricky because you it, it's easy to overspin it and make it really rope-like and this really turned out well. I'm really happy with this. So I'm excited for whoever gets that. The next thing that I finished, I talked about this when I recorded earlier, was Zabberball Crazy. And I purchased this over Vlogmas or, or the 12 days of Christmas um, in Hershey, Pennsylvania. It wasn't in Hershey. I was staying in Hershey. It was closer to Harrisburg. Um, but this is what I've got. A pair of coordinating socks and this slow, I was very intrigued. A, the price was fabulous. It was a two ply, which I thought was interesting. Um, Anyway, and the color was just gorgeous. And for the price, I was like, well, it's a pair of socks. If they don't turn out great, they're still socks. But they're amazing and wonderful and I love them. I do think though that I didn't use the yarn to its full potential. I think that it needed 
to be in like a graduated shawl or as the color work to some a cowl or something so i'd like to try this yarn again um i will put the colorway up because i don't remember the colorway but it is zaverball crazy and i also always love when i don't have to wind yarn first before i have to use it so i like that it comes in this nice little um what do we call those gumballs um those little self-striping balls i love those i'll show you what i'm talking about because i probably make no sense but anyway those are done and those are for me oh i should tell you the pattern i told you nothing about the knitting it is the vanilla is the new black it's the i think third size um, they're big. They're bigger. I should have gone down a size, but that's okay. Um, but they'll be boot socks. And even if they're just snow boot socks, they're fabulous and tall. The next thing I want to show you was just a little project, but it did, I did hyper focus on it for a few days. Um, Stella came to me one day and asked me for scrunchies saw them on a YouTube video, I guess, and she wanted scrunchies. So I, from co-op, had all this Chanel yarn that I got at the Dollar Tree. Premier Yarns is the one who makes it, and it's they're just Chanel. You can buy it on a cone for like 20 bucks, um, but they have them in little dollar store portions, and honestly, it's not that much more to buy them. I mean, I did the math on it, and it was, you know, under $5 more if I bought all the yarn for a sweater at the dollar store versus the cone. So I mean, that's $5 is $5, but it doesn't seem like a huge difference if I just want little bits of it to just go to the dollar store is where I'm getting at. But I did this craft with the kids at co-op. I wanted to do some weaving stuff with the kids and I did this craft a few weeks ago and they were little rainbows and they were just go this was just a template for them going back and forth and weaving so there had to be an odd number of strings what we were going to do at the end but nobody got this far because it just took a long time was do another string this way and have a decorative edge and then do tassels on the end and so then they could cut around the cardboard and you wouldn't be able to see it um fabulous craft cool idea this is so soft uh i don't think i have any of it with me but so i had all these colors and they were all these gorgeous spring colors i just got one of each and we didn't we barely used any of the yarn i was shocked i i thought i was running a risk of only getting one color of each and it went really well so first i looked at patterns and appearance wise i really liked how the knit version actually looked like a sheath around the elastic kind of like the fabric scrunchies used to be like it was just like a sheath tube that was scrunched up right and so i liked that it mimicked that so i first tried a knit version <clears throat> and you knit a provisional cast on and knit 10 rows and then I'm getting a comment right now from Sandy Donaldson shout out to you you have been killing it on the make along um I can't stop reading my notifications because my brain is all over the place anyway good to see you um you provisional cast on and then you will knit i think it's like 10 rows these are both free patterns so i don't feel bad talking about them anybody has access to them um and i will link all the patterns below you knit 10 rows and then you kitchener them together super easy it's not that bad it is time consuming but if it's the look i want then i was okay with that until i got to the kitchener stitch not that I minded doing the Kitchener stitch. It's very meditative. I'm, I don't care to do it. This yarn shed so much when I was Kitchenering it. I'm just going to show you one. This is the knit version. And I really do like how this looks. So it's these like knit tube around the scrunchie. It was such a pain to put together too. Because you have to put the hair elastic on before you Kitchener and you're Kitchenering on circular needles. It was really finicky and 
just not o overall enjoyable. The knitting part was fine. The construction was kind of a bummer for me. Am I saying I will not make another one of these? No, I think it's fine. It's just, it depends on the yarn, right? Okay. So then I found a crochet version because I wasn't up avoiding crochet. It's just that knits my go-to and I always have my knitting needles with me. My crochet hooks are all over the place. Um, but I did just like the appearance of it a little more. Then in this gorgeous velvet yarn, I made a crochet version and of course like it more. So I have a crochet version and this again is a free pattern. So I don't feel I'm not spilling any secrets, but you literally just go into the hoop and work directly around the loop. So I spent like an hour kitchenering this at knitting group on Friday and like 20 minutes had one of these, like just whipped it out. And when I say I want a little, you know, bonkers on these. I seriously made 15 of them in like two days. Um, I was sitting and doing lecture notes all weekend and I got a bunch out. But anyway, so let me show you some other colors that I have. These ones are gonna be gifts. So I have like these bright spring colors, a coral, it's looking really orange here, but it's a coral, a really great sun, sunny yellow, awesome pastels. Um, and then I had this hot pink and what else? I had a pale green and I feel like there was another color, but I don't know. Anyway, I made Stella one of each of the colors that I got. So she probably got six of them. And then I made myself one of each as well because I love a scrunchie around a bun and I can do that. That's cute. And these are so amazing and soft. But this one's mine. I just wanted to show you the knit version. These are going to be in Laura from the Knit Girls always talks about her gift knits bin. And I really need to start that because I've started to like amass a collection of things that I have or I've made that I'm like, you know, I'm not going to enjoy this as much as somebody else might. Or I, I like this, but I don't have to have it. I'll put this as something for someone else later. Um, so these are really good ones that I think I want to keep on hand. And I guarantee you what's going to happen is every time I go to the dollar store, I'm going to go scour for new colors and get the new colors and then make a ton of extras. That's what's going to happen. Okay, guys, guys, this one I'm really excited to show you. I can't, I, I can't even handle it. I knew I needed to record an episode when I cast on and finished an entire sweater and had not talked about it. I purchased Plymouth Seabreeze cotton. It's 50% merino, 50% cotton. Um, it is by Plymouth. I, said, I think I said that. Plymouth Seabreeze, yeah. And I got it in this pale pink color. One of my make nines this year was the Faye Summer Top. And I had been looking out for like particular kinds of yarns that would work for it. It's a, ch it's not a chainette. It's like braided. It's a braided construction. Ah, that's not true either. It's one string because I tried to un unply it cause it's cotton and I wanted to like tie it to like weave in ends and make sure they were okay. But the wool will stick to it itself. Um, so I was just being overly cautious, but I could not unravel it because it was just one string like folded in on itself and sewn together. It was very strange. Um, but it makes a fabulous yarn. I, I love the outcome. But anyway, I saw this on display when it came in at Stranded Yarn and Coffee, my local coffee sh or yarn shop here in Midland. And I had to get it. It was $16.99, I think, a skein, and I bought four of them. So decent uh, cost for what I was getting. And I knew I wanted these summer tops in my, for my, I knew I really wanted this finished object. The funniest part about this is that I almost didn't knit it because I wasn't in love with how the bobbles looked on the sample. Well, I love the bobbles. I, I like, I absolutely love them in person and I'm totally happy. But here is 
my Faye Summer Top. It is not blocked yet, and I should have done that, but I was in a hurry today to sit and record. But you can see the bobbles here, these little berries. And the shoulders are these gorgeous ruffles. And I'm gonna insert a picture because I did try it on and it's a little easier to see how it fits. It really fits well. And I'm really excited to block it um, so that it opens up a little more in the body. But honestly, it's just so good. Oh, I will bring this back on after I block it or maybe I'll just put a, a better picture in. Um, but I'm so happy with this. Honestly, I can totally see myself knitting another version of it. Takeaways. The yarn originally was supposed to be 50 merino, 50 linen, and the sample drapes way better than mine does. Mine is much more substantial and like thicker. And I like that about it. I think it's gonna make a fabulous spring and fall top, which is what I was looking for. Um, the linen would have been more of like a dress shirt. Not quite what I'm looking for. I was looking for an everyday knit that I would wear constantly outside. Um, anyway, so I really love it. I really love this yarn. Um, I've talked about this before, but I am autistic. I am autistic with ADHD. It's a very common comorbidity, at least in women. And part of my autism is sensory processing disorder, where there are functional differences in how I process the sensory input around me. Um, and cotton, I cannot work with. I cannot work with like sugars and cream cotton. I can't touch it. Like it seriously makes, it's like the reaction I get when I touch cotton, uh, cotton yarn, cotton yarn. It's not like a Pima cotton, like a, a knit cotton shirt is fine. I can do that. It's working with cotton yarn. It's like nails on a chalkboard, right? That kind of like sensory repulsion. Anyway, so I, can't, I just don't work with it. I can't believe that a 50-50 blend was this manageable for me. I could, st I still had some aversion to it, but it was manageable. It was a manageable level of um, opposition. So I was really happy with that. And I don't have issues wearing these items. I wanna point out, like I have cotton commercial sweaters that I wear. Um, it's knitting and touching and overly, rubbing them or there's a sound cotton makes when you knit with it it likes oh i don't even know what it is but like this is all medically diagnosed <laughs> it's real <laughs> anyway moving on i couldn't believe that i could work with this and i was so excited to find a good blend that's going to be a good cool summer sweater weather um top because i live in michigan i can wear sweaters in the summer and I wanna utilize that. I want some cute summer knits. But that's all my finished objects that I have this week. I do not have a ton of works in progress going on right now. Oh, that's not true. I've got a ton going on, they're just on hold. I'm only working actively on two of them. That's a better way to say this. The first thing I'm working on is another one of my make nines. I am working on the Camille top and I am using the Knit Picks Alux in the Royal colorway. This is 66% Baby Alpaca and 33% Lurex Sparkle. Um, I've had this forever. I have two other sweaters out of this yarn too, I think. Anyway, I am making the Camille top and so far, I have got this little bralette thing. Oh, so this is gonna be a shirt that goes under, it's like a peplum top, I'll show you a picture. It's a peplum top and it go, is gonna go under like a cardigan or something that tones it down. So it'll be pops of like this bright sparkle. Oh, I love it so much. Anyway, so, this is interesting. You start knitting the panels and then go back 
and then connect on the sides and then connect everything together. And so now I'm knitting kind of like a cardigan, but until we like fold things over and I guess seam or cast off, I'm unsure. But I'm really excited. The construction's really interesting um, because you are knitting down a panel, putting stitches on hold, and then cast picking up stitches and going back the other direction. Instead of doing a provisional cast on there, I really think that extra like cast on edge and seam added some stability to the top of the strap, which I find with knit tops to be lacking. Um, and I'm not sure that with a provisional cast on, you would have gotten the same effect. So I thought that was an interesting technique that I really do think made a good difference. Um, yeah. This is yarn I've had in my stash for a while. I think I got it at the warehouse sale when I went before the pandemic in Columbus. So kind of looks like a bra right now. It looks really small too, but I have continuously tried it on. It absolutely fits the way it's supposed to. So I am really happy with this so far. And I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna turn out really cute. The only issue I'm gonna have is this yarn is decently itchy. And I wear one of the sweaters or both of the sweaters I wear with a tank top underneath it, but it's just like a spaghetti strap tank top. So a lot of my skin is exposed and it doesn't bug me too much. I am gonna have to figure out how to wear a tank top under it, but I might have to like cut it since it's a deep V, I might have to cut the tank top that I have to fit it and like sew it, tack it down. Um, I'm not sure yet. So we'll see, once this is done, I'll have a better idea of what I need to wear under it. <laughs> but I think it's gonna be super cute and fashionable. And it's gonna be another one. I think it'll go really nicely in my wardrobe as is. This sweater, the, um, the Faye sweater. I have like shorts in the summer I could wear this with. I could get a pair of linen pants. I could, um, I have like kind of dressy pants, like bag pants that would go with it. I have skirts that would go with it. So I feel like this is gonna fit in my wardrobe in a lot of places. This is gonna fit as well. I have like a pair of pants and some other sweaters and jackets and things to go over it but I do think I'll need to find, it'll be like one look. Whereas this I think is gonna be really versatile with like other items of my wardrobe. I think that's all I wanna say for now. Um, I have miles of stockinette to go, which makes this a good vanilla project. It is and it isn't a vanilla project because I do have to look at my hands. This yarn is exceptionally splitty and it's really easy to knit into half of a stitch. So I actually have to look at my hands when I'm knitting with it, but it is easy and I can listen to a book or do something else. The next project I have is just a pair of socks. So this is going to be Knit Picks Felici. I think it's Lost Lakes. I'm gonna have to look that up, but this is Felici. My son is wanting another pair of ankle socks because he liked this yarn, he was willing to do another pair of ankle socks, um, but he prefers a cuff. So I'm doing Rose City Rollers, just replacing it with two stripes of a cuff. Um, I have not touched these. These are just whenever I think of to pick it up. They were upstairs, but I've been ta I was taking them places when I was in complicated parts on my sweater and this wasn't as portable. Um, but now that I have a project that's vanilla knitting, I've been, I just want to use that. So these are just kind of on, not on hold, they're just here and get touched every once in a while. I do have some spinning though. The first thing I've been working on is a mystery wool. I do not know what this is, but I was spinning singles on it. Oh, it was, 
I did have a tag, but it wasn't very informative. That's what it was. It said Merino Silk. It didn't have any percentages. It didn't have any company name. It had a tag, it had a price and Merino Silk on it. So it is some combination of Merino and Silk, which was definitely apparent when spinning. It's a pretty pale purple. Um, this was wool that I did not purchase. It was, it came with one of my wheels. I got a bunch of yarn with one of my wheels. Um, it is so soft and squishy. I spun it just short forward, which is my meditative state. That's my go-to draft. Um, that is what feels comfortable to me. And so I need, I wanted something meditative and, and that I didn't have to count treadles and just let loose and do a good, a uh, uh, meditative spin. So that needs to be plied. The singles are on hold because I started more singles of a different spin and I didn't want, I'm not going to change the tension on my wheel in the middle of singles. So I started spinning alpaca, 100% alpaca. It's this gorgeous taupe color. And I got this at the wool mill in Frankenmuth. And it was so affordable and wonderful. And it's a blend. I see white and like a brownish, but it drafts so well. Oh, I love it so much. Anyway, it's so soft. And I am sp spinning to make another one of my make nine, which is the snow fern shawl. And so I have that started. I didn't take it off the, I'm not gonna take the bobbin off um, because again, it kind of messes with tension on this wheel because in order to take a bobbin off, you have to remove the, I'm trying to make sure I'm right on this, but yes, you have to remove your whorls, which isn't a huge deal, but I don't wanna do it just to show a bobbin of taupe singles, right? So I will hopefully next time I record have a full bobbin of alpaca that I can bring over here and show you. Um, I have a full pound of the alpaca and I'm just going to spin until I get the yardage that I need. Um, I am not spinning a worsted yarn. So the snow fern shawl is like a triangle shawl. It's has its center increases and I think edge increases, right? And it is easily repeatable. It is an easily repeatable pattern. I did not want to spin worsted weight yarn. I don't love worsted weight yarn and I don't really like working with it. I like fingering weight yarn. That is my go-to. So anyway, I, I what I'm going to do is just spin and knit until I get the size that I want in a gauge that I want and use the pattern as a loose guideline and then just add repeats because they were really easy to add repeats. I could tell from the pattern and I have a friend who knitted already and I asked her if she, before buying it, you think I can do this? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. Yes, 100%. So I knew I could alter it. And so I knew I could alter it. And that's my plan is to spin the yarn I want to use and then knit the shawl. It'll be a smaller motif, but other than that, nothing else will change. Purchases. I don't, these don't count as purchases, I don't feel, but I found some stuff at the thrift store. <laughs> I found Premier Home Cotton in this cool um, one, two, three, four ply Christmas color. So a light green, a dark green, a red, and a white. And then also this Premier Cotton Fair, which was like cotton and acrylic, but I could touch it and I was really excited about it. So I thought at the time, hey, maybe that'll be a good summer sweater. Um, I'm not saying that that is, an, is off the table, um, but I bought these, they were 90 cents each. My kids and I have been going to Volunteers of America on Tuesday nights. It's our longer day. We wait for my husband to finish work and he teaches a combo at night. So we're there kind of late and it's one of the places that's open and like 
something to do. So they'll each get $5 and come out with two or three things, like small things. Um, and it's fun. They get one or two things. The $5 kind of limits it to getting a lot of stuff that we do not need. Um, but that's been fun and it's been something that they've been looking forward to and are excited about. And I love thrifting, so of course they will. Um, but I found those while we were looking. The yarn is conveniently on the row next to the toys. The last thing purchase wise that I want to talk about is this, this is by Nelkin Designs on where did I get this? Uh, Etsy. And this, I can't remember if I showed you guys this, but I found it because I unpacked a suitcase. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I forgot I bought that. This was a gift from Santa in my stocking and it's a shawl cuff. And I can't remember which way it goes. It definitely goes this way where the cuff I think you're supposed to like weave it in too. Like so that it's above and below, or I can't remember. Maybe like this, where you come in. I'll have to look at the picture because <laughs> clearly I don't remember. Um, the only thing I'm really bummed because the clasp is too big for the holes. And so I need, like there is absolutely no way that this will go through these holes. I tried all of them. And it's not a matter of you just need to wiggle it. Like the hole is significantly smaller. It goes like, there's literally no way I could get this through. So I have to enlarge those holes somehow and I'm, annoyed about it. Also annoying, the hardware didn't come installed. I had to put that in and it was hard. Like it was hard to do. And I feel like it's not in there very good because I didn't have proper tools. Like I had to like rip the leather a little to even get it in. And so now it feels like loose in the leather, I'm not, I can't show you that, but it's like literally moving up and down in the, oh, in the hole. And so that was frustrating. And so I, that's now that I'm telling this story, I'm remembering why I was so frustrated and put it away and didn't want to look at it. Um, so I need to find someone with a leather punch because that's probably not going to be something in my budget. And I don't want to destroy it. And it was, this was the other piece. I ordered it so far in advance that by the time I like opened it on Christmas that like it didn't feel appropriate to go back and complain. It was well past 30 days. Um, so that was on me. But I probably would have sent it back and had them repunch it because um, I don't know what to do about it. Regardless, it's gorgeous. And the other reason I liked this was because they used it as a cuff. I thought it was just super cute as a cuff too. So I liked it as a durable or as a cute yet transferable item. Like it can be jewelry, it can be a shawl cuff. You get hot and you wanna take your shawl off, you take it off and throw this on your wrist. Um, kind of cool, right? For homeschool stuff in life, we really have not done a ton. We've been doing, I mean, well, not we've been doing school, don't get me wrong, but like we haven't done a ton of like out of the normal stuff. It's been a lot of the winter time, right? This is our busiest time of year. Mom and dad are working, um, you're doing school and we have activities. Like in the summer, things slow down and we have more like we go bowling and we go camping and this and that. But like right now is kind of the busy time of year. Um, so exciting things to talk about. We just don't have a ton. We've had so much snow. 
We just haven't had anything huge or exciting. And my goal on this podcast is not to like make us appear better than normal. We are very average. It's not all rainbows, right? We should talk about the times of years where things are slow. It's normal. Everybody feels this way, right? Okay. But we did do a few th cool things. We had a Valentine's Day party at our co-op, which is so cool. I am really blown away. There are 170 people in our small area um, that are now in our, you know, Facebook group, in the, in the community itself. Um, and we consistently are having good size groups lately. Um, it's been really fabulous and of course it's filled gaps for us in socialization and even for mom like finding mom friends right um but that's going well we've had a lot of fun crafts it's been very social lately people have started bringing more board games which is really cool i am excited for it to warm up where we could start meeting at you know parks and being outside more would be nice. Um, but again, socialization is our goal. So we kind of like the calm meetup. Anyway, that's been going really well and I'm really happy with how it's grown. And honestly, I've heard so many people, I've heard such fabulous things from other people's mouths. I heard one mom say that she comes and doesn't feel like she has to hide or change anything about herself that she's just accepted and understood and it people have had really good things to say about the meetups and um it is very heartwarming to hear that it is being appreciated so i'm very happy with how all that's going um we'll see what next year brings i mean we'll still do what we're doing now but we'll see what things we can add next year I won't have brain space to think about the direction of co-op until after, uh, until May when my teaching is done for the year. Um, but after that, I'll think about what we want to do and like maybe we'll move to more field trips or what, um, whatever it's going to look like. Other fun things we did, the Chippewa Nature Center, which is about 20 minutes from our house, um, had an event that was pre-pandemic that obviously stopped during the pandemic and just came back this year. And it is, a, I think they call it, it was the mid Michigan seed swap. I want to say they called it, but don't quote me on that. I'll put it if I'm wrong, what it really is, but it was a seed swap. So you go and there are all kinds of seed vendors. So you can buy seeds um, from local farms. You can, and a lot of the booths had free seeds for people like, oh, we have a ton of these, so we're giving away packets of this. And in addition to that, there was a really cool community table. So the community brings seeds, individually packaged seeds. You can package them in anything. Some people had them in pill bottles, some people had them in all kinds of things, envelopes. And you wander around this tape, this chaotic table, and they're kind of separated in, by type. But by the time we got there, I felt like they were pretty mixed. Um, but anyway, and you go and they're free. Everything's free. So it's a seed swap, right? But you do not have to bring seeds if you do not have them. Um, next year, we hope to have seeds. I know I talked about this, but we moved new climate. And I had such bad luck with all my seeds and germinating and all of it last year. I was trying multiple new things and I need a heat map. Um, I, ha I just have to have a heat map, right? A heat map. And I was using artificial lights and I just was not, it, it was not a great thing. And I did not really have a garden last year. Regardless, we are ready for it this year. I have everything set up and ready to go. Our garden bed beds are ready for us to plant. And we came home with all of these seeds. For one dollar. Um, we have, we brought cantaloupe, we got cucumbers. I want to add that I do have a lot of seeds already, so I didn't need any tomatoes. I didn't need any lettuce or um, greens. I did get some of the stuff I didn't need, but a lot of this, 
this is just supplement. Um, I have the basic stuff, but Stella got cantaloupe, cucumber, Grand Rapids lettuce. This is from the Michigan Seed Library. So this is, okay, this was interesting. I wanted to talk about this. So I'm gonna pause while I'm doing this list of things I found and talk about this. So I talked last year while I was starting my seeds about the seed library at our library library. <laughs> So there is a little portion, it's just a box and you have, there are seeds in little packets and you just take a packet of the seeds and it's through the library. And I did not realize that that was associated with a bigger library. So this is the, I'm holding it upside down, Michigan Seed Library. And so when I asked the woman, I asked the woman, is this at all related? And she goes, well, yeah. She goes, we're the ones that are overreaching. And so part of it is receiving the seeds and giving seeds back. So like we get some seeds to maintain the integrity. And um, anyway, it was really interesting. And I had no idea that all of those seed libraries were connected. So. It also reminds me that I should check out what's at our seed library this year and see if there's any other supplements. It was really bananas there. I mean, it was so busy. We did not stay too long. And I had Stella with me and it was packed. And so, and she's so short, I had her right in front of me. So like when she was kind of done and like we had been wandering a lot, we just headed out. Um, what else did we get? We This is the one we did buy. We bought pink Cosmo water, wildflowers for our yard. This is the Phoenix Community Garden, which I think I might have mentioned too. Um, if I haven't, it's a really cool local um, garden. They did a presentation at a political group I go to. And I thought it was really cool just to like um, bring awareness, like to talk about it and to tell people about it. Um, and they were giving away some free seeds too that were older seeds, but that they had germinated well last year for them. So they were giving them away. And we got acorn squash, which I love. We got some bush green beans, cilantro, sunflowers, Swiss chard, pumpkins, and that's it. The other cute thing that happened was Stella got stopped by an older gentleman. And I think he just liked that she was there and enjoying herself. And he told her he thought she needed something to put her seeds in. And so he gave her this little book and it was a journal, a gardening journal. And so there's a notepad where you open it and can write notes in it, a bunch of stickers, and then a whole little section of these seed envelopes. So we got these little seed envelopes. And so she would, as we were at the table, she would open her book, pull out an envelope, we'd fill it and write what's on it and then move on. And so it was, she was so into it and we thought it was really cool. Um, I could have gotten a lot more seeds and things I needed or, and other things, but we're not planting all of these this year. This was just a fun experiment and for a fun ex activity and thing we wanted to do with Stella. If we don't plant them all this year, we'll try them next year. But um, Stella, it, the next step in this activity with her is that we're gonna do our, our research them so that we can figure out when we need to start each one and where and how and conditions. Um, and so this will be an activity in looking up information on the internet, which is a, clearly a new thing. She's only in second grade, so this isn't something she needs to know right now, but we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show her how to look up the, and we'll talk about different seasons and or the different growing zones and why. That's a whole lesson on, you know, the earth and how it, the climate works and all of that. And we can spitball from there. So that's our next step, but I think she's really excited. And I, we're also gonna sit and write down what seeds we got and some notes in our journal. So that's gonna be science this week. We're ditching curriculum and doing the garden, um, which I love. I am so glad that we get to do this. 
she's doing life sciences. So some of this stuff we've already talked about. We talked about plants and we talked about cells and anatomy early in the year. And now she's in like animal kingdom zone. Um, so this will kind of touch back on some of the other stuff that we've, we had been doing other homeschool things. We're still in ancient times with our history curriculum. And I want to show you a book that I'm going to read. I guess this is probably more for the book section, but since it's connected to curriculum, I'm going to keep it here. This is the Popol Vuh. And this is the sacred book of the Maya. What did they say it translated to? The book of the community is what it translates to love that. I think that's fabulous. So this was recommended when we were reading, I think two weeks ago, we were in Mesoamerica, talking about Mesoamerica and the Mayans and the Olmecs. And so the Popol Vuh came up and we talked about the hero twins, uh, the story of the sun and the moon in Mayan culture, which is related to the ball game that they played, um, which now I can't think of what that ball game's name is, but if I, I'll look it up and put it up. Um, and so our history curriculum has these things called history hops. So you go through a lesson, you go through a chapter and you learn about the culture and then you hop in history. And so it's written as, oh, imagine you woke up in this era, era, right? And kind of immersive type situation. Um, and so we went back and heard the tale of the hero twins, which comes from the Popol Vuh. And the Popol Vuh is their religious text, right? This is translated using Mayan, hang on, let me read it on the back because it was here. So this was translated and it says here that most of the previous translations relied on Spanish versions, not the original Maya text. So this is based on 10 years of research in the translation. I think this is interesting. It's, this is the most important example of Maya literature that survived the Spanish conquest. It is one of the greatest creation accounts comparable to the beauty and power of Genesis. I am super excited about this. So this, I at first when I got this, I was like, this is huge and thick and this is not something that we're gonna read together. There is a huge amount in the beginning about the history of the Popol Vuh. And the tr so there's a preface by the translator talking about like his journey in this process. But then there's also like an introduction with the history of the texts itself. So pre-Columbian Popol Vuh, the authors of it, the history of the manuscript. Um, yeah, anyway, and then it gets into the stories. The stories themselves are very short. I didn't think this would be a book that I would read out loud with my kids, but I think Eli would really get into this. He had for his history curriculum, a book of Egyptian myths. Um, and so I'm really excited. I think he'd really get into the Mayan mythology and they're super short. So you could read like three or four of them in like no time. Um, but it also has all these footnotes, like tons of information down here. I'm super excited about this. So I don't think, so I will say this was part of Stella's curriculum and this is way too advanced for her. I think that she will sit in the room while we're, I'm reading it out loud um, and play with her kitchen and like stuff her toys while Eli and I listen to it but I don't think she's going to absorb too much from it. I do think she'll get stuff out of it and be able to follow the story for the most part, but I think she's gonna need us to sit and talk at the end of each of the stories. But some of the stories are literally like a paragraph. Here, the first of the four men. It's this short paragraph. So like a lot of this is just like little bits and pieces. And most of the stories are like more, no more than three or four pages. And most are like one to two. But also in addition to this, it's not super above grade level for Eli. I like looked through here and read and Eli will be 100% fine. I am not worried about him whatsoever, but it's going to be too much for Stella.
I think that's it. I think that's all we've got. We don't really have a whole lot going on homeschool wise. We're just pushing through our curriculum. I will say that this year I decided not to, I was letting go of more control. And I am, if friends come over and we still have school to finish, we're playing with friends and things like that. Like I want to be able to let our schooling be a part of our lives and not build our lives around it. In addition to that, I knew that a year round schooling is a better option. It is, there's tons of research on it, on why year round schooling is better. You don't waste as much time with reviews at the beginning of every year, X, Y, Z. And I'm not saying we're not gonna take breaks in summers, but shorter days throughout the whole year versus long days in nine months. And especially because the nine months of the school year are the nine of our busiest months. All activities are there. All of our stuff is during that time frame, and mom and dad work. So that's just our busy time. I committed to a full year of really letting go of the reins. And we're finally at a point where I am positive this worked out. <laughs> I, <laughs> up until now, I've been telling myself, this is gonna pan out, you're okay calm down. And like I've said before, we're dropping the ball on like two or three things a week, not like a whole subject. It's not like, it's not like we're, you know, we're progressing at a good pace, but I have severe anxiety. So of course I'm going to worry about it until I get to a point where I, I can't worry. Right. And we kind of finally hit that point where I'm like, Oh, we're much further along than I thought. And Oh, okay. Like, but anyway, it's very empowering. It's very, um, it's nice. It's nice to see that I was right. Anyway, or I don't know, I don't know. But I feel good about where we're at in the year. We really have gotten much more efficient in our school days and work days. Um, this semester feels totally different than last semester. The kids and I go for one really long day and that kind of sucks but it's one day a week and we do get to do some fun things and we still get to go eat as a family for a big meal at lunch. Like we have a great, a good time. The kids aren't super stressed out and crabby. I have to keep them entertained and busy, but that's not a big deal. And Eli gets so much school done that day. So overall, it works really well. And then Thursdays this semester, we come home after I'm done teaching at 2.30. So, that's not too bad. And usually they play with friends that day after they get home. Um, but it's going well and we teach until the end of April. So the beginning of May will be done. I know my husband's not teaching this summer, but I don't know if I'll be teaching this summer. So we'll see how that goes, but that's usually done beginning of June anyway. But overall things really do seem to be getting more efficient, better, more manageable, getting in better routines. Of course, we're gonna be ready right when it's time to be done, but, or we're gonna get into a fabulous routine right when it's the end of the semester. And that's all I've really got for homeschool life stuff. It's just a bunch of normal stuff with winter and this is busy season, right? Books and shows that I'm watching, I don't know now that I've said this, what shows I'm watching or have watched recently. I have really bad object permanence with memory. This is a part of ADHD memory recall. Anyway, um, what I do know, the one thing I do know that we've been watching is History's Greatest Mysteries. It has Lawrence Fishburne as the host. And the first episode was about D.B. Cooper, the, the only unsolved skyjacking in the United States. And my son had heard of this case and was really excited to watch it. So we started that last night. And that's really the only show that I can think of. I did not make a list. But books, I have been listening to books. The first book that I listened to 